This is a quick start with the Preston Light Ranger 2, uh, including the video interface, uh, how to aim and work with the W or when to choose to swap out to the M, uh, and the basic things you need just to get yourself up and running. And we're going to start with what needs to be plugged in, what doesn't. Uh, firstly, you've got your standard MDR4 here. We've got the Light Ranger plugged in through the serial connector and I have power going in um, via DTAP. Um, you will also have a power cable, uh, sorry, a run stop cable uh, for Alexa cameras or Sony cameras, whatever it is. But you'll probably have this as well, which also runs power, but you'll always want to have additional power running in, especially if you have more than one motor, because these things take a lot of power to run, and a light ranger, especially on a long cable, takes a good amount of power to run. The Light Ranger does allow additional power in through the uh, two pin Limo in as well as the serial. Um, you can put more power. I find I don't need it um, most of the time. Occasionally if I need extended range or if the power supply is limited then putting more power on this side improves reliability. Uh, and can extend some range. But as I said, having plenty of power at the MDR usually solves those issues anyway. Um, in terms of how... <laughs> sticker! In terms of where you're going to be pointing the Light Ranger, this is the W. So it's got quite a wide field of view coming out the front. So if, you're, if you imagine these rods are the axis of the lens, you're going to want to have this as close to, sorry, loosening it up. You're going to want to have this pointed as close to on axis as possible. You don't want it to be pointing too far down or too far up. You kind of want it to get as close to that lens and as close to on axis as possible. When people are really close up, you might need to tip it a little bit, but you're going to be catching the top of their head more than their face at that point. And of course, if the map box comes up, you're going to have to move where this is. You know, this can easily be blocked by something on the map box uh, if it starts to be moved up by the DP just before a shot. Um, make your loaders aware of this uh, so that if they spot it when you're not close, it they can flag it to you over radio or they can tell you that the map box is now cropping part of your light ranger and you can make the appropriate adjustments such as raising the Light Ranger or moving the top shop or uh, changing how the map box is being flagged. Um, now that we've got that in and on, let's look at the video interface. Now I've got the lights on this covered up, but this will just tell you the channel. I don't have any video in currently because I don't have a real camera with me, but the overlay will still work even if you lose signal entirely from video, um, such as a Teradek or a Vaxis, it will still show you what's on the screen. Um, it's all being fed onto my monitor here. Now, as I move the Light Ranger, you're going to see the bars move. And as I move the wheel, the motor will move and the bars will move relative. I have it set so as something is further away, it is at the top of the screen. So if I'm set to two foot on the lens here, and the Light Ranger is reading something further away than two feet, it's going to be at the top of my display. As I pull to infinity, those bars are going to come down and line up in the middle, where it thinks is three foot seven away from the Light Ranger. If I move the Light Ranger back and forth, it will calculate the depth of field and position relative to the wall that's in front of me and tell me where things are moving. This might be the wrong direction to you. You might find that actually you want something further away, you want it to be at the bottom. You want to pull to infinity and have things pulled up to the middle. Now to flip the direction, you can go into the menu 
and go down to bar direction and switch from how I have it set as subject infinity to knob infinity. Once that's selected, the direction of infinity is now reversed. So if I go back to where I was at two foot six and move this now closer, see it's coming up from the bottom rather than down from the top. At the beginning of a job, you're going to want to set your light ranger to know what brand of camera you're on, be it ARRI or RED or Panavision, Sony, or if you're on film, you want to tell it what uh, camera model specifically, so if you're on Alexa Mini or Mini LF, and you want to tell it what resolution and whether there's any overlay information or surround view on or if you have a punch in or anything like that, you can tell it in these top four settings. Once that's set, you're not going to be changing it too often. Uh, if you're on anamorphic lenses, you can tell it that you're on a two times anamorphic or you can even set a custom anamorphic, which I think I have set to 0.5. Uh, circle of confusion, I just leave that as default. You might want to change it. I don't generally. You have defog. Defog is going to give you the ability to look through thin haze um, at low settings and up at 30 or 40, you're going to be seeing through quite thick fog or smoke. Um, it's going to reduce your total range, but you're still going to get decent readings out to 30 feet offset distance. This is the one that I adjust most often. Uh, beginning of every day, I check it. I make sure that my light ranger is sitting uh, a certain distance away from the film plane. I change the settings if it's different and some shots will require me to adjust this ever so slightly. Usually by less than an inch, it'll just be a tenth of an inch kind of fine tuning. Depending on what the actor's doing or the specific lenses, the rest of this here is your cosmetics. So what colour your bars are, what direction the bars go, how uh, bright the overlays are. So I have mine turned quite the way down. I don't like too much of a center line. Um, and I leave the autofocus uh, reading box really low in the background. This is so I can see the, the scene uh, much more clearly. Because if these bars are all the way up at 100, you can see how bright they are. There's nothing in the background because we're on black, but compared to where we were a moment ago, uh, down at 20, that's much less uh, distracting when you've got subjects over the top. Uh, if you're shooting on certain situations, a really bright scene, you might need to push this up to 30, or if it's really dark, you might even need to go down even further. Um, I've occasionally had this set to 10 on the foreground um, because we were shooting very, very dark scenes and it was very difficult to see the cast's face um, clearly, especially with the bars over the top. So having that turned down can really help. There are several options of what sort of overlays you have. So this is for the distance box. The distance box is here, or for me, which is top right. You can change the position and you can tell it whether it's what the light ranger is reading on where you are on the knob or you can just tell it just show me put it on the left only what the light ranger is reading and then over here you've just got what the light ranger is reading and whether it thinks you're sharp or not one of the useful things about working with the light ranger is it will recognize when you switch from the m to the w very quickly here the preston thinks i'm on a 25 mil and on the M, this is very small in the middle on the LF. So 25 mil LF, this is only getting me very little bit in the middle. So I'm gonna need to switch to the W. So by unplugging that and plugging in to the W, and now that I'm on the 25, I'm getting a much wider reading, getting much more information about what is there, like the small subjects being read. This is the arm that my uh, camera is sitting on. In day-to-day -day use, you're going to be using this red box in con combination with the bars a lot. You can move it to one side to tell you what your readings are. 
uh, into certain sections or to ignore certain sections. You can also use your set range to only tell you about distances between where you've set it and ignore anything outside of that. Easily reset and you get everything back. For autofocus, things work best when you set your box as narrow as you can on your subject and tell it only think about a certain range. And then as things move outside of that, it will ignore things that are too close or too far. You know, if I move my hand in front of the Light Ranger, it's just going to ignore that near subject. It's not going to pull to it, it's not going to move the motor. But as soon as something off in the distance starts moving, such as the camera, it'll track that back and forth for you. Because it's a Preston system, the Light Ranger will update its overlay when you change the lens. So if you select a new lens, if you go and choose say an 85 while you're on the W, it will automatically show you how much that's cropping. And on the 85mm, the W isn't really suited. You can use it. This centre 4 is still better than what a Cinete would be getting you at that sort of range. Now that we're on the M, you can see that we're getting a lot more detail. Uh, we've got a lot more boxes on this 85mm. Uh, compared to what we were at on the W.